Hey, hey, Tim's RV Tips here. Uh, we're going to show you the, the whole van build here. We're going to try to fit a lot of the key features of this van. It's totally different than anything that's in, in the world that's unique. And I'm going to show you the advantages and possibly disadvantages of it. It's not a luxury van. It's uh, more of an adventure van, an off-grid uh, system and a technology demonstrator. Not the most comfortable for sleeping. It's not a luxury van, but it is a... Uh, as many advantages on the technology side uh, to give you uh, uh, much better performance in terms of you know, heating, cooling, um, it being able to boondock for days or weeks on end uh, or indefinitely. We've been out a whole week without plugging into uh, shore power, so we uh, definitely, and we actually heated the, uh, the rig during that time to get down to 37, actually down to 32 one night, and uh, the heat pump worked fine. So, uh, and we have plenty of water on board and uh, it's kind of a water uh, reclamation uh, system on board. So here goes. But first I want to talk a little bit more about uh, my background so you'll understand where this van came from. Um, at the age of 13, I was uh, building electronic equipment, old Heath kits and ham radio gear and uh, and my extra class uh, amateur radio license uh, so I'm a t definitely a tinker but I got a BSEE -E from Penn State um, I'm a retired engineer and builder and uh, grandfather uh, I'm the president of the EAA chapter 1250 experimental aircraft association so we build airplanes in our workshop over at the airport uh, I also uh, own an aircraft I've been flying for over 30 years and uh, built, uh, rebuilt an electric car uh, back about 10 years ago. Uh, own a Cessna 172, Model 3, and Model Y. Uh, so definitely into the high power uh, electric car technology. I'm a pilot, uh, you know, instrument and commercial pilot. I wanted to be a commercial pilot, but uh, kind of stayed with the IT industry. I also interviewed to be an astronaut. So I kind of think uh, differently than most people, as you can, t as you can tell by this video. For example, one of the things I did after I retired was to buy this Fisher Koala ultralight airplane for $350 and restore it. So every joint here went, uh, had to be gone over. Uh, weight was everything, lightweight um, uh, construction on this. And I came to appreciation of wood and structures and um, it just helped me understand uh, much better how to build things. So I finished the rebuild and learned how to fly and uh, flew this airplane myself several years ago. So let's get into the van project here. Uh, why am I building this? Uh, I was a requirements engineer uh, for Lockheed Martin several uh, decades ago, I guess I'll say, and uh, I came up with a list of requirements, what this van had to be. Because um, if you don't spec, you know, specify what you want, uh, you won't get it. So here we go. It had to be simple, uh, very you know, no doodads designed. It's not a luxury van, so no luxuries really, but it had to have functionality, uh, sustainable sustainability in terms of power, water, and so forth, uh, the, the materials used. Um, modular design, so I could build it in pieces and install it in the van. Upgradable, uh, uh, easily upgraded. I didn't want to fix uh, the design in that I uh, you know, could always bolt something else on or make it easy to upgrade. Uh, and keep the cargo van features, like a 4x8 sheet of plywood, or carry two 70-pound e-bikes in the back. I want to maintain a, a large cargo capacity. In fact, we're going to help move my daughter with this van, so over half the van can be used as a cargo storage space for that uh, move. It had to be stealth. Uh, not uh, no holes in the sides, uh, unnecessary holes in my in my view. Everything, uh, any holes, uh, if I could do it, were out the bottom of the van for the, the power, water, sewer connections. Uh, but the uh, uh, just want to make it so I could do some stealth camping. And we have uh, we parked that hospital parking lot and an apartment uh, parking lot, and it, it sort of looks like a construction van, and uh, had to be aerodynamic. So it got. Uh, the base van got 30 miles per gallon, and with all the 
uh, the new van build on top of this van it, it gets 24 miles a gallon so uh, very good uh, MPG there and a true true four season operation uh, there's a lot of uh, fake four season uh, vans out there I wanted it to be actually run down to you know uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit it kind of was my uh, my target and I believe it will do this uh, and you'll see later how how it will do this so let's start with the uh, overview of the van here we just uh, camped in a, a park down in Tennessee and uh, this is our, our campsite you can see it's pretty uh, stealth and aerodynamic in that the major protrusion is out the back so that's not going to slow uh, or produce any much drag the solar panels definitely have some drag but they're also in line with each other so it's kind of a one-time hit on the airflow uh, disturbance there uh, the insulation um, started with an aluminum floor cut specifically for this and filled with uh, marine foam it's a dense foam that can be walked on and uh, I wanted the floor to be foam basically to eliminate thermal breaks uh, as well as the entry step uh, typically these are uninsulated designed and built a a bulkhead with a two inch foam uh, door that uh, isolates the cabin from the cockpit. So here's a shot of the back of the galley module. Uh, it's constructed of, everything's constructed of 8020 extruded aluminum. And as you can see here, the back of the drawers and uh, the plumbing. Uh, there's only really one plumbing pipe, and that's that black pipe in the center, uh, sort, uh, sort of the center of the, uh, the galley module there. It also has a very large opening, an eight inch opening that I can put water in uh, or uh, sterilizers, whatever I want to do to sterilize the tank. You can also reach in there and maintain the water pump. It's a submersed whale water pump, uh, 12 volt operation. And uh, so you can see how easy it is to both fill and maintain this tank. I didn't want to deal with uh, you know, put poking holes in the, in the van to fill the water and uh, just make it real simple here to fill the tank from virtually any source, including water jugs. Uh, behind the scene reality here, uh, how the van was built, I went to the salvage yard, um, uh, Glicks in F uh, Fleetwood, Pennsylvania, and, and bought this reclaimed aluminum. And it was all turned out to be 30 millimeter type, which is perfect for my project. Uh, strong uh, and light and cheap, $1.60 a pound. And I also bought an eighth inch sheet uh, from the same salvage yard. You know, it was marked up a little bit, but it was, it was brand new. It was just a, a salvage. Also, angle aluminum, I cut that for connectors. And I bought a bunch of bolts and had to slightly round their heads to fit in the channels of the 8020. Uh, this allowed me to do a reconfigurable structure. Uh, just change a, kind of like an adult erector set. Uh, also... Uh, Put insulation between you know all the uh, structural elements uh, thick poly iso cyanurate uh, thermal blocks um, all over the place so the next uh, series of photos i'm going to show you the finished uh, cabin and i'm gonna i'm kind of skipping around here on purpose to kind of maintain your attention because uh, i'm sure you're interested in how the final uh, design looked this is a bamboo um, faces on the soft closed drawers uh, of the galley module and uh, you can see the soft closed mechanism here it was built in uh, kind of difficult but it, it worked out fine uh, here's two cot beds with a center aisle so these are cot beds so they're not you know the most comfortable beds but it's six inch foam uh, for the sleepers and uh, the uh, there's not a lot of room uh, there's some sh you know shelving over top of the uh, cot beds. Uh, here's the shelving itself. It's open uh, technology, just, just open frame here with uh, clear plastic bins or whatever bin you, you would want to choose for this. This is this is our uh, first cut at it. Here's the microwave and refrigerator uh, module that I built. And fairly, it's a compressor refrigerator, so it runs off of uh, 120 volts, uses about 325 watt hours per day which is very low draw on this. This will run for weeks, weeks and weeks off the Tesla battery. You have flexible mounting, so you can put iPads or you know, TVs, whatever you want, on these uh, 
uh, extruder, this 8020 aluminum. So we've watched uh, you know a lot of TV through through these uh, uh, you know attachments you can put anywhere in the rig. Here's the 42 gallon potable water tank. Obviously, you can see the level here. Eventually, this will get finished, but for now, uh, you know, for our inaugural trip here, we just left it open. Here's a micro switch, a foot operated switch that pumps uh, 12 volts and 220 volts. Uh, you can get hot water within six seconds out of this system, uh, as long as the 220 volt inverter's on. Here's the uh, uh, potty uh, system. 38 gallon waste tank underneath with a standard uh, dump valve. And uh, that's uh, the most, one of the most difficult things is slinging this underneath uh, the rig to get uh, enough for 38 gallons. We, right now we just have a curtain for the uh, toilet module uh, just to kind of keep it open and so it, uh, so it can be uh, more usable. Here's the uh, solar panel system. Uh, this is kind of a uh, uh, photos. It's a, a pantograph, so it's kind of distorted, but it's uh, five uh, sun power panels, uh, 360 watts each. Tesla Model 3 battery here. It's good for 20 kilowatts. Uh, this is the electronics module I built. Uh, all the breakers uh, and switches and relays. I spent hundreds of hours designing and building this system during the COVID uh, months of uh, you know, February through through June of this year. Here's the couch. Uh, the, the couch is, goes over all the electronics and it sleeps one. So we are, we actually are sleeping, I'm sleeping on this couch right now. Here's all the electronics, uh, two six kilowatt inverters, solar charger right there. Um, we have the uh, BMS system, the sock meter, a state of charge meter here. I've got three locations in the rig where you can see the state of charge right there it's showing about 80 percent charge uh, the six kilowatt charger is right there on the right and as we go through here <clears throat> there's a google home system actually i have a 12 volt uh, 96 volt to 12 volt uh, system supplies all the, tw the 12 volts for the rig and here's a 12 volt to 120 volt inverter this inverter allows you to charge uh, the Tesla Model 3 battery while you're in motion uh, from the essentially the alternator, the engine alternator. So right now I have it set up to supply 300 watts of power uh, while I'm driving into the, uh, you know, it basically converts the 12 volt battery uh, to the 120 volts and then that 120 volts runs the uh, charger for the Tesla battery. So it, it's another way of, um, just another way besides solar, so I can charge with solar and this inverter at the same time for enhanced uh, charging. And uh, you know, if you have a couple dark days uh, or uh, driving at night or cloudy days or whatever, uh, you have always have another source of power for your rig. Here's a cord reel, 50, 50 feet uh, electric electric uh, motor, and it has a hole uh, in the floor that uh, you know all the electric goes down through, and they have just a foam piece there that uh, that provides insulation for the cord reel. Uh, it's electrically operated. Uh, I plan to make it remote control so I can go outside and just kind of feed the cord up through the bottom of the rig and uh, wind it wind up the 50 foot. Uh, 50 amp cord reel. Uh, it also charges through EV, the electric vehicle connector, and uh, this actually op opens up an opportunity for EV stealth camping, where I could back this up to an EV charging station and camp overnight while I'm charging the battery. So I installed uh, five of these outlets in the van. Each of the outlets has five uh, sub outlets uh, within 120 volt outlets as well as three USB and one USB-C outlets. So here's the uh, one of the reasons why there's it's so efficient is that these dual pane ac acrylic windows are 10 times more energy efficient than glass windows than a single pane of glass. 
Um, so there's two, two panes, and each pane is five times more efficient. So um, I love these windows. They're doing a great job holding in the heat. I mean, so far, we had no sweating on them um, during our, you know, when it went down to 32 degrees. So I'm really happy with, with installing these windows. So now I'm going to get into some engineering design and things I've learned uh, many years ago about keeping the uh, design simple. So here on the left is what the user was, what was installed at the user site. Um, what's on the right is what the customer actually wanted. And I, I feel like that applies to everything in our lives. So what I'm going to discuss with you is uh, why I did, you know, how this applied uh, to the van build. So this may sound boring, but I'm going to get into first uh, principles of design. And one of the, uh, the leaders in this is the Tesla. Um, in that you know, very simple design uh, on the user interface. But what, what he does, and what I like to do, is disassemble problems into basic elements, uh, reassemble them from the ground up. So question everything. Uh, the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, natural resources uh, in the design. Uh, boldly question everything. Uh, for example, why is a sink needed? Why do we need to put uh, wastewater down into a tube into a tank? Uh, why not recycle that water right at the right at the spigot end? Um, so what we have is uh, basins, several basins we can put, uh, you know, but we can bus our dishes, we can wash them, and then save that water to flush the toilet. Uh, we're eliminating propane in this uh, rig uh, with all electric design. Uh, winterization, uh, why do we need to winterize? Um, people do it all the time. It, is mostly successful but has problems. We're not going to winterize it all in this rig, and I'll show you how. Um, minimize holes, holes in the sides, um, holes in doors, latches. Uh, we don't have any uh, any handles in the lat latches for our galley, so we just have holes that you put your finger in. Uh, minimize plumbing resources, uh, resource consumption, fossil fuel and water, uh, and the volume, just the volume inside the van is a resource. So I've used aluminum for a very thin and lightweight construction and one eighth inch uh, plywood around the walls to give it a good wood look, but very, be very lightweight and, uh, you know, minimize cosmetic elements. Also um, maximizing thermal efficiency, aerodynamic uh, energy efficiency and performance. So, for example, our hot water system. Uh, we get hot water within six seconds from an instantaneous uh, coil uh, embedded in the faucet, in the kitchen faucet. And we don't have any uh, hot water tanks um, wasting energy there. And now onto something fun, uh, lighting. Uh, also rethink, rethunk, yeah, rethink uh, the lighting system in that uh, I wanted to use these LED strip lights because of their ability to change color, uh, it could be two things. Task lighting for you know being able to see stuff very clearly, plus uh, warmer lights for at night. And also the ability to change color. So I got these, uh, uh, I think they're LED net or LED net um, off uh, Amazon. And you can see the, the quite variable color. This, this um, controller controls all the lighting in the rig, uh, pretty much all. And I also have some spot spotlights, but um, this controls just hit one or zero and all the lights go on. So it's very easy to use. Uh, here's an example of a double string above the galley, you know, uh, give the, uh, the galley more lighting. Uh, so you can double up on the, uh, the intensity of the light. And uh, so it, it just gives the, uh, it, it's a little different than most rigs. There's, there are some spotlights. You can see it up in the upper center there. I do have a touch light, but um, these lights, these LED strings provide otherwise all the lighting that we need. And put it in party mode, have some fun. When not using the mini split HVAC system to heat or cool the van, I use this fan. It's a $17 fan from Walmart, and there's a hole in the upper part of the, the bulkhead here, and it's isolated, so it's forces it can either force air or bring air up but normally I would force air down through into the cockpit and then uh, 
you know, it would pull air from the windows. And of course the windows have screens in them, so you won't have any bugs. Uh, a very simple way, uh, reducing the uh, those protrusions on the top, cutting a hole in the roof, which is uh, fraught with issues, um, and you can't insulate it. So this allows you to insulate the van while providing uh, a ventilation flow. Also, uh, it has a crack mode. Uh, seeing so sh uh, Shown here is I have uh, one of those window protectors that uh, keeps the rain out, yet I can crack the windows in the van and uh, let the air flow, uh, either flow out or, or pull in, as shown here, out of the, uh, the window, natural window of the van. It's, it's already built, so no more holes need to be drilled, uh, huge 14-inch holes in the van. Speaking of climate control, this is a quiet mini-split system. If you know what nine, 19 decibels sounds like, um, this is what it sounds like. You can barely hear it. Uh, you hear outside noises much more than you would hear this mini-split system. Unless you put it on full fan, and, and then you get a, a little whoosh of wind, but it's, it's probably less than 30 decibels, which is a whisper quiet, and uh, so you can... Uh, get a peaceful night's sleep. Um, we did hear some clicking sounds that we've been able to sort of eliminate with this um, as it moves around its veins, but uh, it's all controlled with this remote control, uh, easy to use uh, remote control. Also, at, for winterization, uh, we're going to use this uh, radiant heater, so it's going to project heat into the battery and the water uh, tank inside the rig and keep them warm. Meanwhile, just using 300 watts of power. And, uh, and I have a thermostatic control that is going to you know, maintain the, the temperature between, uh, let's say, 35 and 45 degrees Fahrenheit uh, to keep it from freezing all winter while in storage mode. You know, if we're not living in the van, we'll want to keep those, uh, the electric heater on. And uh, it can be powered by the sun. Uh, we don't need to be plugged into shore power, but we can certainly... Um, you know, plug it into shore power if we don't, uh, don't want to bother with uh, the solar system. Another advantage of this radiant uh, system is that there's no moving parts, uh, no fans, and uh, that will keep the uh, HVAC system, the mini split, um, you know, from being worn out just trying to produce heat for the rig. Just have these uh, basically a solid state heater uh, system for winterization. And last but not least, we have the wiring. All the wiring in this van was done externally. There's no wire embedded in the walls of the van so that it can all be uh, modified, updated, upgraded in the future. Uh, and it was easier. I didn't have to pull wires through and hide them and disturb the insulation. So it's a, it's a higher R value in the van because the wires are inside the living space and can be easily uh, changed at any time. That's pretty much it for the this video. Um, just looking to the future, what, what's going to be next? So obviously it's not a finished van. We need to do uh, you know some sort of flooring system. We have rugs in here right now, and they're actually working pretty well because I can just take the rugs out and beat them. Uh, so there's not much need for vacuuming or cleaning the floors of the rig. Uh, but uh, you know some flooring will be used. Uh, ceiling, uh, cloth tapestry, ultra lightweight of course maybe glue, glue that to the ceiling. It won't look like this, uh, this gypsy van here, but it, it'll look all right. Uh, the sleeping area updates. Uh, we need more room for the beds. We may extend the couch with the aluminum plate. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Moldings, obviously finishing pieces, the molding and curtains. Uh, fold down trays, perhaps, uh, outside where we can, can sit outside and, uh, with a folding tray that comes out of the galley module and lifting the rear suspension. Uh, it looks like we're sagging just a little bit. Uh, I've got to weigh the van, do some weight and balance, and see if we need to put a lift kit on here. Uh, they are available actually from Mercedes-Benz. They have a RV lift kit that I'm gonna look into. So more on that later, stay tuned for, for Tim's RV Tips.